Hiya, babe. Say, how about a little... Ouch. Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. <laughs> you all remember Metro Golden Mayor's famous Maisie picture. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Anne Southern. But first, your announcer. <laughs> I'm Maisie, like the man said, Maisie Revere. I also was born in Brooklyn, in a cold water flat. But I've been in hot water ever since. Yep, ever since I could remember, I've been kicking around the world trying to earn my daily bread. And when you're trying to earn your daily bread, you got to run into a lot of crumbs. For example, if you want to, for instance, there was a big Danny Metcalf. Danny had a big dimple in his chin, and when he smiled, his whole face caved in. I'll never forget the day I met him. I was working at the information desk of a small hospital in a small town out west. The pay wasn't much, but my meals were thrown in. Anyway, on that particular day to which I am referring, I was behind the desk with a fly swatter in my hand to keep away the flies and the interns when a rather nice-looking young fella comes up. Pardon me, miss. Oh, yes, sir. What can I do for you, sir? Who does the buying for this hospital? Well, that depends. What are you selling? My eye. Ah. Oh. Sorry to say to use car lots. We don't buy parts. Miss, how can you be so cold-blooded? I ain't. It's just that the hospital ain't no place for jokes or a screwy publicity stunt. Oh, look, Miss, do I, do I look like a comedian or a publicity hound? No, but that don't mean nothing. A hunk of celery don't look like it sounds like either. And if you did need money that bad, there must be an easier way to get it. Yeah? Like how, for instance? Well, you can borrow on your life insurance. You can't get life insurance in this town when you're on Big Dan Metcalf's list. Well, what about this Big Dan's list? Say, you're pretty nosy, ain't you? Yeah, but I'm trying to save your pretty eyes, you chum, if you'll let me. You mean... You mean you'd actually like to help a perfect stranger? Well, why not? Well, I... Hello, Mr. Vidder, quick... Get Dr. Howard, emergency. Well, he's in surgery, doctor. Good. I got a patient in the ambulance that's going to need the works. Some poor guy named Jerry Platt. What? Machine gun. Yeah, drill full of holes right in his car. Uh, how'd you know how I got it? Well, Jerry had the store next to my newspaper. And when he didn't pay... Uh, I, I, I just took a wild guess. Well, you'd better have a more believable answer than that, mister. Cops might want to ask questions. Yeah, it ain't easy to get away with murder in this town. It is when your name's Big Dan Metcalf. Huh? What's that? Uh, I, I shouldn't have said that. Why? If that's the man that did it, you should tell the cops. Don't you think so, Doctor? Think what? Well, that the name he just mentioned should be arrested. I didn't hear him mention the name of Big Dan Metcalf. Did I, mister? Nope. Never heard of him. Say, hey, what is this? Now, look here, Doctor. I'm sorry, Maisie. I'm in the business of saving lives. I know, and but... And if you don't mind, I'd like to save mine. I may need it later on in life. Well, I don't get this. Mister, if you... He's gone. Who's gone? The man that was just here. I didn't see anybody. Oh. So that's how it is, huh? Uh-huh. Well, I'm going to see somebody right now, the chief of police. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Easy, if you don't keep out of this, you'll wind up at the bottom of something. The bottom of the river, wearing a cement girdle. Well, just the same, I'm going to the police. Well, it's your funeral, baby. Anything I can do? Yeah. Talk me out of it. Hi, Keith. Well, it's about time you're back, Lieutenant Burns. Yeah. Did you look over that car that that Platt fellow was machine gunned in? Yeah, Chief. Big dance torpedoes have been getting a little careless. Found fingerprints all over the doors. Oh, fingerprints, huh? Now, don't worry, Chief. 
I wiped them off. Oh, good. Yeah, but I wish he'd figure out some other way to get them storekeepers to come across with protection money. If these shootings and bombings get in the papers, we'll have the uh, FBI on our necks. <laughs> don't worry, chum, don't worry. Nothing will get in the papers. Hmm? Even Johnny Clark's on Big Dan's sucker list. Not only ain't nothing going to get printed about Dan's uh, tactics, but Johnny himself is also kicking in with protection money to stay in the newspaper business. Johnny? Yeah. I thought he had red blood in his veins. Oh, he has. And he wants to keep it there. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Big Dan has a milk dry and so scared, I hear tell that Johnny's putting an eye of his on the market to get payoff, though. That's uh, a smart cookie, that Danny boy. <laughs> yeah, miss. What can I do for you? Well, I, I want you to arrest him. Arrest who? Well, this is no time to ask questions. He might get away. Now, look, miss. Look, calm down. Now, start from the beginning. Okay. I want you to arrest him. The man who did it. I know. I know. Well, if you know who did it, how come he ain't in jail already? Look, miss. Who did what to who, when, why, and where? Oh, this ain't no time for details, officer. I'm Maisie Revere. I work at the hospital, and this morning a man came in that was machine gunned. I want you cops to arrest Dan Metcalf immediately. Big Dan Metcalf? Yes. Uh, you, you must be mistaken, miss. Uh, Big Dan is a respectable citizen. Oh, yeah, of long standing. Well, he's been standing too long. He should be sitting in an electric chair. He's the one that machine gunned the, that, uh, um... Jerry Platt? Yeah, that's the name. Well, how about it? Are you going to bring in this Big Dan, or ain't you? We've been trying for years to pin something on Big Dan, ain't we, Chief? We have? I mean, we have. Yeah. Now, look, chums, this Big Dan is guilty. Yeah, but with no proof, our hands are tied. Well, my hands ain't tied, and I'm going to bring that guy in and make him confess. Oh. Well, by appealing to his better nature. And appealing to Big Dan's better nature? If you ask a silly question, you got to expect a silly answer. See you later. Burns, I better call up Big Dan and warn him that Revere Dame is on her way over. Yeah. I got a feeling there's going to be trouble. Yeah, but Chief, she's a woman. I know. That's why I got the feelings. <laughs> You just have to be more careful the way you do things, Dan. I know I'm only your lawyer, but you just can't go on putting the squeeze on little people forever. Oh? Uh, why not, Kendall? That's what little people are for. When are you going to stop? When are you going to have enough money? Don't be silly. There is no such thing as enough money. Now, if you don't mind, Kendall, I have a lady waiting for me in the outer office, a Miss uh, Revere. What she want? Me. You. So Chief Benson told me over the phone a little while ago, it seems Miss Revere is concerned about that machine gunning this morning. This, uh, this Miss Revere knows you had the guy rubbed out? I understand she suspects it. Oh, fine. What are you going to do about it? Oh, come, come, Kendall. Let's not ask silly questions. You mean you're going to shoot her, too? Of course not, Kendall. I've sent to Chicago for Fingers Jugan. But you, you can't kill a woman, boss. Uh, maybe she won't talk. Nonsense, Kendall. Did you ever meet one who didn't? But uh, what about Fingers? He's an outside goon. Can he be trusted to keep his mouth shut? He has no choice. I got enough on him locked up there in my safe to send us all to the chair. You keep a record of your whole career in crime locked up in a safe? Why? <laughs> Haven't you heard, Kendall? I'm a bit of a ham. Ah. Oh. Now run along to your habeas corpuses and leave the lady to me. You can go in, Miss Revere. Mr. Metcalf. Well, well, well. So you're Miss Revere. I'm delighted to meet you, my dear. <laughs> the pleasure's all yours, Danny boy. <laughs> uh, sit down. Please do. Thank you. Cute-looking secretary you got outside there, Mr. Metcalf. Oh? I've seen nicer-looking pans under an icebox. <laughs> Don't mind Monk's looks. He got those ears from beer. But they do, use them to open the bottles. Well, 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 I see we have a sense of humor, Miss Revere. Not when it comes to murder, we ain't. That's what I'm here to talk to you about. Uh, Mr. Metcalf. Yes, Miss Revere? You're the most despicable person that ever lived. <laughs> You're so right, my dear. You admit it? Yes, I'm rather proud of it, as a matter of fact. It's the nasty people in this world that are remembered in history, remember? As Shakespeare so aptly put it, the evil that men do lives after them. Hmm. Julius Caesar, you know. Huh? Julius Caesar, he was stabbed by Brutus. 
Oh, another one of your hired killers, huh? Hired killers, Miss Revere? I know it was you who had poor, innocent Jerry Platt knocked off. So I understand. But you have no proof. How do you know I have no proof? Well, I have, shall we say, friends in the police department. Oh, so that's it. The cops are on your payroll, too. How can you get away with it? Oh, you needn't have any concern for me, Miss Revere. I can afford it. Well, I can go higher up with what I know. They have a district attorney in this town. Oh, yes, yes. A very fine district attorney, too. (laughs) The best that money can buy. Oh, He's on your side, too, huh? Why not? It's a very comfortable side to be on, Miss Revere. I'm uh, certain you would find it so. Now, listen... You have a certain nuisance value, Miss Revere, so I'm offering you a business proposition. Say, uh, $5,000. Uh-uh. Ten? Uh-uh. Try 25000 <clears throat> Very well, 25000 Uh-uh. Miss Revere, I will not be played with like a cat with a mouse. But you're not a mouse, Mr. Metcalf. You're a rat. Goodbye, Big Dan, and I do mean a goodbye. Just a moment, Miss Revere. Exactly what are your plans? You're wasting your time seeking the aid of the law to convict me, you know. For further details, read your daily newspaper. I'm so sorry to burst your bubble for you, Miss Revere, but in this town we have only one newspaper, and the editor might be slightly hesitant about printing what he knows. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. Perhaps not, but I am. As a matter of fact, he'd... Give his right eye for me. Oh. So you're the one he wanted to sell it for? Yes. Johnny Clark has a fairly successful newspaper, a comfortable income, and his wife and child like to eat. You wouldn't. You wouldn't do anything to his wife and kid, would you? Oh, you're forgetting, Miss Revere. I'm a louse. I know. And I'm going right down and talk to Johnny and tell him that if he doesn't expose you, his life and those of his family and fellow citizens would be a living death. Miss Revere, you remind me of my mother. I do? Yes. She couldn't keep her trap shut either. Now, I'm warning you, Miss Revere, don't meddle in this thing. So long, Mr. Metcalf. Miss Revere, I'm warning you. And I'm warning you. So long, big shot. See you in court. Yes, boss. Monk, get me fingers joking. <laughs> Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern, will continue in just a moment. John, the only way to deal with a skunk like Dan Metcalf is to print the truth about him in your paper. Hey, he's right, Pop. Now, never mind, Junior. This is man's work. But you go and set up the type for tomorrow's edition. Yeah, and I got just the headline for it. Big Dan Metcalf, a murderer. I'll set up the type for the headline right away, Pop. Oh, wait a minute, Junior. Maisie, how are we going to prove that Big Dan's a murderer? Well, that's simple. All we got to do is get evidence. True. And how are we going to get the evidence? But how are we going to get it? How are we going to get it? Yeah. Got any ideas? Well, one of us could break in the big damn safe. Yeah. yeah. But who? Got any ideas? Metcalf keeps a listing of all the payoffs and stuff in that safe. I happen to know about it. Well, I could make a try to open that safe. Um, Dan wouldn't kill a woman if he caught her, would he? He would. Um, uh, yeah. Like we were saying... Who are we going to get to break into that safe? Dan had it built special, burglar-proof. The only one who could open it would have to be a specialist. Yeah. Say, Fingers Dugan could do it. Who's Fingers Dugan? Only the best safe cracker in the country, that's all. He's sort of retired from that racket, though. Just hires himself out for killings now, I understand. Well, at least that keeps him from being just a bum, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Gee, that job would be a cinch for Fingers. If the FBI hadn't sent him to San Quentin... But he's back, Pop. I saw him this morning in a saloon. Junior, what were you doing in a saloon? Looking for you, Dad. Ever since this big Dan business started, you've been lushing... Never mind. Well, then we're set. 
One of us will get fingers to open Metcalf's safe. Uh, which one of us? Uh, any ideas? Well, I, I'm a married man with a kid. And I'm a kid with a married man. Okay, I'll do it. Uh, no, no, Maisie. You don't look the part. He, he wouldn't do it for a mere stranger called Maisie Revere. No, but he might for Minnie the Mall. Who's Minnie the Mall? He's just looking at her, Junior. Minnie the Mall. The toughest lady gangster since Jesse James. Maisie, are you out of your mind? That's a silly question to ask. Of course I am. There you are, Maisie, right off the press. This should do the trick. Let me see. Want a dead or alive or both? Minnie the Mall just escaped from Alcatraz. Alcatraz? But that only has men. Yeah, that's why I had to escape. Get a load of the rest of this ad. Wanted by police in 48 states, Minnie the Mall, alias Moitle the Moiterer. Gee, Maisie, and that picture looks just like you, too. Uh, I don't know, Maisie. Your nose seems a little long to me. Well, that ain't no nose. I'm smoking a cigar. Well, here I go. Off to find Fingers Dugan. Gosh, Pop, Maisie sure is brave. Yeah, a wonderful girl. Well, I might as well go into the composing room and set up the type for tomorrow's headline. I've got a feeling our troubles are over. Or just starting. How are all the presses, Pop? Good afternoon, Sonny. Oh, what can I do for you, sir? I understand a certain Maisie Revere was here. I'm here to investigate, well, so-called accident that happened to a Jerry Platt. Now, I understand Miss Revere knows something about it. Oh, well, she just left. That's too bad. This was important. It was very important. Uh, say, what's this on the desk? Wanted Minnie the Marl, alias Moitle the Murderer. She didn't want any strangers to see that. And I can't say as I blame her. This is very interesting. Very indeed. Well, goodbye, son. So long. Oh, by the way, who shall I say call? Uh, here's my card. I'll be back. Who was that, Junior? I don't know. He left a card. Sylvan Howard, Special Investigator, FBI. FBI? Oh, Maisie, you just turned into a federal case. <laughs> Yeah, miss? What do you have, Hay? Nothing, Hay. I'm looking for a Fingers Dugan, Hay. Is he here in this saloon? Oh, Fingers, eh? Hmm. You see them two cauliflower ears over there? Yeah. Well, he's between them. Thanks. I mean, thanks. Um, say, Meathead. I use perchance Fingers Dugan... And what if I am? You don't have to get nervous with me, chum. I was told to look you up by a pal of yours. Yeah? What pal? What pals you got? Well, let me see now. There's, uh, there's uh, Duke Watson. Yeah, he's the one that told me to look you up. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hey, well, you know, I ain't seen Duke for ten years. What's he been doing? Ten years. It figures. Say, uh, who are you is anyway? Are you kidding, Hay? I'm Minnie the Mall. Here, get a load of my publicity. Oh, hey, hey. And mighty tough little cookie, ain't you? Yeah. Say, Fingers. Yeah. If you ain't busy tonight, maybe we took a team up and do a job tonight. Nah, I can't do it tonight, Minnie. I, I got to knock off a thing. Anybody I know, hey? No, I don't think so. This uh, dame, her name is uh, Maisie Revere. Oh, I see. Maisie Revere. Maisie Revere? Yeah, yeah. Big Danny Metcalf was just in here to see me. He made the deal. Hey, you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't know what this here Maisie Revere looks like, would you? Uh, nope. Do you? Yeah, uh, nope. I'm glad. Yeah? Uh, I'm glad I run into your fingers. I got a better deal for you than bumping me. I mean, uh, her. That is, if you got noise. Boy, certainly I got noise. You hoise? I mean, you have? <laughs> well, now, look, tall, dark, and, uh, <clears throat> tall, dark. There must be a million and a half bucks in this here job. It's Big Dan Metcalf's safe. Now, I can't rob the safe of a guy that's a customer of mine. It ain't ethical. It ain't? No. Well, okay then. 
I'll just have to team up with Boyt the Bum. Boyt the Bum? I never heard of him. Oh, you're kidding. Boyt's just about tops in the racket. He's so good he opens the safe with his feet. Yeah? What's he do with his hands? Holds them over his eyes just to make it tougher. Oh? Well, hey. Hey, look, there's nobody better than Fingers Dugan. Why, I was once called the Josie Itaibi of safe cracking. Tell you what, come on. You take me down to Big Dan's joint and I'll show you. Chief Fingers, sure it's dark in here Dan's office. Maybe we should turn the lights? No, no, nothing doing. If Voight the Bum can open a safe without looking, so can I. The big show off. Shh, hey. Somebody knocking at the door. That's my knees. Oh. I think this here is the safe. Oh, good. Hurry up. It's all right, I'll have it open in a minute. Here goes. We always find the dial. <laughs> Sorry, wrong dial. Huh? Here, here, here's the safe. Now, Minnie, you just watch me open this. No, not with your feet, fingers. This is no time to be a ham. Open it with your hands. Well, all right, I will. I still got that dame to knock off, so I guess I better hurry. Yes. Let's see, now I face turn it left. Which is left? Oh, yeah. There. Uh, there. There, I open it. And the hard way, too. Lefty. Wait. I'll turn on the desk light and see if the stuff's there. Yeah, here they are. Big dance, pay off records. Fingers, all our troubles are over. Here, yeah, I'll say they're over. Just look at this here hall. Hey, there must be a million bucks in this pile. Maybe more. Maybe a hundred thousand. Fingers, you can't take that money. It's stealing. Yeah, it's... That's bad. Oh, who's there? It's me, Maisie. Say, who's that? Oh. Oh, oh, he's a member of my mob. He's, um... um... Davy the dope. Hey, now, wait a minute. He called you Maisie. Well, that just shows you what a dope he is. I just came over to tell you to hurry. Uh, uh Minnie the Mob. Yeah, Minnie. There's a guy from the FBI in town. The feds? Hey, we gotta get out of here. Yeah, I got what I want. And now Dan Metcalf yes, will we'll get on. the chip. Dan. Nice of you to come visit my humble office again, my dear. Oh, gosh. Hey, now look, boss. I can explain what I'm doing here. You see, I didn't really mean to take this dough. I... Just wanted to show Minnie the mile here that no safe ain't safe with me around. <laughs> and a masterful job you did, too, Mr. Jugan. Oh, is not nothing. Except this isn't Minnie the mile, this is Maisie Revere. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Well, come on, Junior, let's go home. It's past your bedtime. Fingers. Yeah, boys? Now you have an extra meddler to eradicate. Eradicate? That means rub off. Junior, don't help him. Look, Dan. Please, Miss Revere, don't try to stall. Yeah, get the job done quick, Fingers. See the cops. Yeah, we got a benefit to attend, eh, boss? Yes, for poor Jerry Platt's widow. You won't get away with this, Dan. No, there's a guy here from the FBI. FBI? FBI. You're uh, kidding, ain't you, son? Oh, no. It's quite true. This is the guy. Well, welcome, mister. I'm Maisie Revere. How do you do, Miss Revere? The bartender at the Silver Crown happened to overhear your plans for tonight. That's how I found you. Say, mister, what are you doing here? Merely investigating a, an accident that happened to a certain Jerry Platt. Well, there was no accident, Mr. Law. Big Dan here was responsible for the murder. Murder? Well, this is interesting. Please, Miss Revere, you can't prove it. This stuff I got in my hands in a copy of the Kinsey Report. Yeah, we got you all now. Okay, Dan, let's go. Go? Yeah, we're arresting you for the murder of Jerry Platt, ain't we, Chief? Yeah. Mister, tell him down in Washington that we local cops don't let nobody get away with murder. But look, you two men are... Turning state's evidence to save their own hides, aren't you, coppers? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, take them away, Chief, and fingers here with you. Uh-huh. Come on, rat. Yeah, sure, officer. I mean you, Dan. Very well, gentlemen. But you won't get away with this. Come on, let's go. Come on, come on. Come on. What, what? Well, mister... Looks like the local murder incorporated just went into bankruptcy. Yeah. Sure was a lucky thing for us that you showed up in time. That bunch sure turned chicken when they met up with a member of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Federal Bureau of Investigation? Sure, you. There you are, ain't you? On your card it said FBI. Well, that's true, but, uh, 
I was merely investigating whether we should pay a claim to the wife of the deceased. You see, FBI stands for Fidelity Benevolent Insurance Company. Oh, no. <laughs> and those crooked cops in Big Dan thought that he was... Oh, brother, what a switch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. What am I laughing about? I have to pay that insurance claim. In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. Once again, here's Maisie. Well, so ended that. Big Dan found out he wasn't so big after all. I guess the lesson we can learn from that little episode is that you gotta really keep on the alert if you're crooked. The law is sort of like a nightgown. While you're sleeping, it creeps up on you. Well, I gotta get back to the hospital now. Get along there, Pete. Little Maisie's heart took a beating all day. Now it's your turn. You just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Ann Southern. Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Johnny McGovern, Donald Woods, Peter Lee, Howard McNair, Sidney Miller, Sheldon Leonard, Bill Conrad, and Junius Matthews. Jack McCoy speaking. <laughs>